to Fish Easy on a Saturday afternoon. I apologize for the tremendous delay. It's, uh, uh, well, not that tremendous, but it was a slight delay of uh, from 4.11 to 5 o'clock. And one of the reasons why is because we had a terrible storm in the area and power outages were, were rampant and we lost power in the fish room. So I hate to say it, but uh, it's true that the fish room made it through um, with some help because obviously when there's a power outage, the first thing to consider and be cautious about is air. So I was able to use a battery inverter and to keep the air going for an hour and a half uh, after it had been out for an hour. So for a total of two and a half hours, the fish room had to uh, manage without power. So that's uh, what happened. And uh, with the power outage, it was kind of a difficult thing to do because with no Wi-Fi, with no power, there's nothing to see, no lights, it's, it's very difficult. But uh, the squall moved through and uh, there were branches down in the area of here, Ontario. And that's what happened. So now I made it over to, uh, hello Roman. Um, you're not too far. You probably suffered uh, some issues over there too. And you're in Etobicoke. I think you had some, uh, well, we had power outages where I was. So now, uh, just to give you guys uh, all a wonderful opportunity to uh, think about what to do in a case of an outage, I think it's a great idea to basically be prepared. So that's one thing before the summer is over with uh, to get something that's going to be able to ride through a fish room and to keep it going for a couple of days if necessary, even if it's just air, because uh, the fish will do fine. Even food is 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 not the issue. It's it's definitely um, uh, keeping the um, the air moving because I, we have a tendency to overcrowd tanks, and if you do that, that's it. So where am I, I, where am I at? I am at the uh, facility where I've developed an expansion part of Fish Easy. And, and Gary, welcome Gary. You're not too far from me. Did you, did you lose power today too? I was out for two and a half hours. So I'm over here in a place where I'm going to show you some of the uh, tanks. Yesterday was the final move and I uh, got the last of the uh, items moved into this location. And behind me, as you can see, there is uh, uh, some, some boards and things. Let's just take a look uh, what's going on behind me. Okay, hit this. Okay, so this is the first part. Uh, it's actually an eight foot stand. I had to dismantle part of it and now I'm on the uh, mad mad search for a bag of screws this is an eight foot stand that's uh, 18 inches in depth and this is the top it looks like a ladder that's the top portion and it's going to go right here as you come down into this basement into the stairs you're going to see uh, uh, this this eight foot stand now the reason why it's um, um, it dismantled a little bit is only because i have to get the uh, get it screwed back together but I have all the screws and the and you'll notice that the supports everything has L brackets and holes so it's actually not going to be that hard to figure out it's just going to take some time and screw gun and zip 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 and next thing you know uh, it'll be ready uh, to go now let's take a look uh, as you come down whoa, whoa, whoa here we go here is the fish room expansion so red laser welcome ray aquatics and uh, ryan you didn't lose power okay that's really good but you never know sometimes uh, uh these storms blow through and it can knock certain trees down and over and others so you'll notice that uh, one of the problems that uh, we've got here is that these tanks are going to all be uh, positioned in such a way that there's some locations where it's not good for example Notice that uh, this particular tank sitting up here on this has to be moved because the ductwork comes down right here and uh, that's not enough space. That's definitely not enough space to be able to get in and out very easily. 
so what I've done is I've gone through the room and we've kind of um, positioned uh, the numbers on the tanks actually represent uh, where they're going to end up finally. And so we're going to have to do some little switcheroo. And and uh, that's that's just, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have, uh, you're looking at seven tanks and stands. And then behind me, hey, Stubbs Aquatics, welcome. And behind me, you're going to see uh, more stands. These stands are a little longer, and they support two, also 18 inches in depth. And they go from here to here. And uh, these stands are all screwed. So that's the nice thing. Without using nails, the um, person who put this together was, uh, in fact, Mr. Bob Wilson. Mr. Bob Wilson uh, is the individual who, who uh, put these stands together. He built them by plans. He made up the plans. And uh, they will hold these in this particular rack, 270 gallons. And this particular rack um, is nice because it's made out of very solid uh, wood, a type of cedar. And uh, he made special care to make sure that there were no knots in this section or the portion that was uh, the supportive down below. So also you'll notice that um, the, the brackets are in there, even though they probably don't even need them, but he was uh, super careful to make them extra strong and um, and they they really are strong so uh, what's going to go on here is uh, four more tanks there's uh, two above and two below and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this we're going to we're going to I can just do that with one hand it's so easy we're going to pull this uh, right about here and uh, let's see what it looks like it's going to come in You'll see like a um, aisle. So you're going to come in here, and there's an aisle here, two tanks, four four tanks, and then six tanks. So this first aisle is like a uh, is like a horseshoe, and you've got six tanks. And then you come over here, and there'll be another six tanks on this side. So um, having this stick out like this will probably create some access issues. Not a, a tremendous because I'm going to be able to access these tanks from most of the space and be able to reach in with a net and be able to take fish out. So each one of these tanks is custom made for um, 18 inch racks. So that's also a really nice thing. Many of them are drilled in the back or on the side. So as you can see there, um, there's, some, there's some nice uh, features here. And we'll, we're going to be able to uh, put in a drain system, and uh, we'll also we also don't have to use that. People don't. That's just because it's drilled doesn't mean you have to use it. Here's a tank that was set there, and you can see the drill is on the front. Now you could leave it on the front, but I think it in the end uh, you, you're going to want to reverse this. So that's why I wrote in here. This just turn this tank around because uh, what we'll do is. Put the uh, drain on the back so that they're all the same and they, I can run a drain along the back and uh, then they all just drain into the to the one drain so this uh, particular one is lower as you can see the stand is lower so this is a few inches lower here I don't know if you can see that from here to here it's a few inches lower and so there isn't so much an issue I have plenty of room or space above there is a window behind there which is going to mean that there's going to be some um, daylight coming through at certain times of the day. I may have to uh, do something about the back of that tank. In fact, I should do it right here on the back of this one before I turn it around. Eh? And uh, again, this is uh, going to pull, be pulled out more because of the... Uh, actually, I'm going to replace this tank with a shorter one. This is uh, one of uh, the tanks that's really high. And it really is meant for something a little higher, like angels, and that would just that would be really nice for those. These, um, this is not the only room. There is another room, and as you can see, uh, what we've got is uh, all the paraphernalia that I picked up from um, Mr. Wilson, and uh, there's also plenty of plenty of air lines, water lines, drain lines. Everything is in there. We've got a uh, water system. We're going to be using this for uh, conditioning the water and then pumping it back into the tank. 
Um, this is, is actually a water heater room, but I'm going to be able to access uh, the, the piping from around the corner and come in here and place, place uh, this particular tank right there in the corner. And then that way it will be uh, very close to the water source. And also uh, I'll be able to access uh, a way of uh, taking it across the ceiling since it's all open, get it into the other room through that hole and it will be able to get to the other spaces. So I can pump the water uh, where I need to, but I could also just use a long hose because, hey, uh, uh, Major, and uh, welcome, Major. My dear, and uh, thank you for joining us today. We're just showing off some of the uh, spaces. This is a stand, by the way. Uh, this one's going to go in place after we've moved the other stands around. And uh, this will also, it's another, I think, four foot stand. And this sits right on top of it. So, and it will have like a underneath, so for storage and things. And then, of course, the tank's on top of that. And this is the base. So it's very easy to move around. But again, made very strong uh solid wood and uh kind of as you can see beefed up there's no question that there's there's a lot of things here that that uh can be made uh, very strong so with all this uh paraphernalia for the tanks and there's pumps and there's just about everything you could use or think about for breeding and i've brought over some of my um obviously some of my piping my pvc work so there's uh, there's quite a bit to do and, and just look at the some of the drains here this is uh it's got a lot of pieces and then of course uh, he connected a a piece that goes in here the drain if you can imagine a slip joint and then goes into a barb which was then a um, um a plastic tube or vinyl tubing going right up to the the overflow so that's how that uh, actually drained out. So uh, that's just the beginning. Hey, Ray Aquatics. Hey, yes, everybody's joining in. That's great. Uh, here's another room. And this is the furnace room. And it's got, let's see, some more tanks. Uh, there's a couple more here. Um, the, 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 hey, you know, Chris, that's the idea is be able to grow out fish. And so, like, for example, those batches I have there, before I, they have a chance to have any issues, I'm going to be able to throw them in a tank like this and um, give them plenty of space and water and uh, feed them up and and um, we've already positioned this particular uh, rack as you can see um, it's been leveled each tank is sitting on uh, styrofoam for leveling purposes and uh, we've used some some uh, little pieces of uh, wood for the the um, what do you call those uh, shims so that to get it um, pretty pretty much uh, done uh, there is the furnace this is the furnace in the room and uh, now we have as you can see uh, in this room there'll be two stands and the one that we, you just saw it was in pieces uh, I'll put in the back in that place so these four tanks are the ones that are going in the stands we saw a minute ago they had nothing on them these are the 70 gallon I believe there's 70 gallon, not sure. Um, I have to get used to it. There's uh, one, two, three, four tanks here. And they have, uh, they have end, end um, overflows. So with the fact that it's on the end, then they need to be positioned just right on the stand. Uh, this one's not the end, it's in the middle of the end, it's on the corner of the end. So that's kind of a consideration to be. So looking here, You'll notice that the bottom ones, uh, as you can see right here, it has to be, when it's sitting right here, the end overflow has to be in the middle. The top tank can be on the side, and uh, preferably um, in the middle of the two stands. So we've got the two stands, this one and this one. So these two will sit side by side right here. And that will give me an aisle way so I can get in and out. So we really appreciated the, the uh, oh, you have no idea how much uh, work it seemed to be able to get into a, um, a fish room like this. And, and, and most of all, uh, uh, to, to, to buy a whole fish room, 
And to buy the whole fish room is one thing. You know, you, you go down, you say, okay, settle on a price, hand off the money, and then uh, everybody's happy, right? No. First of all, it's more, more than um, the money, right? It's the work. The work it takes to take about 20 of these size uh, tanks apart, getting them out of a basement, going up the stairs, out of the house, transporting them, getting them over to a new location, down into the basement, and a tremendous amount of work and uh, hard labor, really, basically. And I, I know that it, it, it's tough, and I, I, I've been doing it for weeks, and it's been difficult, and sometimes it, it has affected the live streaming and so forth. So that's where we're standing uh, today. Uh, from now on, uh, after this live stream, I'm going to uh, start doing what I can to get the tanks set in place and air moving. So we can start putting water in the tanks and then checking for leaks. There will be some that will need to be resealed. And that's a big job in itself. Then there's the air, and I'm going to run the air, as you can see from this um, uh, ductwork, I can run it alongside the ductwork and hang it right from this, the, the uh, straps for, for the ductwork. This, this place is uh, on the old side and it's got like things like, you know, T-bar ceiling or drop ceiling, but you know, it's the ducts that are being, that are probably um, here screwed on to the structure above. So that way you don't, you don't ever hang things from a T-bar ceiling because then you'll find it all over a real mess when it pulls down. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. So that's the story behind um, um, getting this installed and getting it going. Um, thank you for the thumbs up, everyone. Uh, I appreciate it. I see that there's uh, quite a few of you that are that have joined us. Uh, you hit the thumbs up, and if you um, appreciate the update, then please give it a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, please be sure to do that, especially if you're in the replay crew. Just, you know, mention that you're in the replay crew. Thank you. And uh, I'm happy to say this uh, location is only 10 minutes from my house from fish easy uh, breeding the nursery setup. So uh, once the fish get big enough, it will be not a hard ch change or a hard uh, move to, to relocate them in buckets from one location to the other. And then from here, they will go to the market. You know, can sell off the fish as need be. And uh, there's a lot that can be done in big tanks like this. But uh, my goal is merely to have a place to put the uh, fish where they can grow out and have plenty of space so that there's no issues in growing out with uh, uh, large spawns, for example. And that's the important thing. Fish Donkey, thank you for joining. I, I hope uh, you were able to catch what was going on. I just showed off all the tanks. I'm about to sign off so I can get to work. Uh, I will show you um, uh, maybe uh, MB is asking about how do you take care of ram eggs? Okay, well, um, go back to um, see if you want to see how to do that. I believe it's very easy to go back into my um, uh, live streams, they're all in the um, archive there. You, you can just go back to the live streams and go to uh, I think it's number one or two or three, it's the first three or four live streams we did. And we went through the breeding of the rams step by step. And um, go by the title, it will tell you um, something about the, the rams, you'll identify it, and that's the feature subject. Basically, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, run through, uh, because you ask right now, I'll be happy to answer it. S typically, you, you, you take the eggs and I put them in, um, I like to use um, RO water because I don't want to use hard water and I take um, the RO water and, and I just put the eggs out of the dish or rock or whatever they came on and stick it in the, in the uh, container. The container receives some circulation and I do that with, um, uh, I do that with 
uh, airstone or it could be even a breeder box but the small the fry are very small in the beginning so I'm not actually running the breeder box through the, the, the regular cycle the regular way of flowing the air from the tank so I don't heat the water I don't heat it up to 85 degrees that would be I think um, um, a problem once uh, Ryan once the eggs hatch um, I just start using uh, tap water the, the fry don't seem to be affected whatsoever and I've noticed um, um, when they're in the egg and the yolk stage changing the water from RO to regular tap water it seems to have no effect the reason the only reason they're in the RO water is is uh, in the beginning is to keep the eggs from any calcification it's very similar to the case where um, discus fish if they lay the eggs and I'm happy to report that my last pair of discus uh, has hatched a full batch and I have no idea how many babies there are they're all the none of them are swimming yet but I couldn't believe how many there are and so I'm expecting a huge batch just looking at the mass of babies that the parents have put onto the they put them onto the sponge filter I hope the sponge filter doesn't suck them up in fact I don't know why I didn't do this I should have probably reduce the amount of airflow so it's just barely that way it, the fish wouldn't be caught up in the anyway well it's too late now so we'll see what happens they're about to go free swimming very soon so when this pair when they laid eggs in the past not one hatched not one hatched ever because they were in tap water but when I use the RO water the um, the, the discus eggs don't have issues and they hatch once they hatch, I can start using and changing the water frequently with uh, regular tap water and everybody's happy. Uh, they do just well being raised in the tap water. So the other thing, uh, MB, I didn't mention to you that the eggs, when I first get them, is I put um, in the breeder box, the medium breeder box, I put uh, six drops of um, methylene blue. And then uh, just before they hatch, which is going to be three days later, the black rams hatch in two days but the regular German blues hatch in three days and uh, what I do is I change the water just before they hatch and at that point I'm not too worried about the RO versus you know for the hatching because it's over the course of several days will the will the issue come to be um, then after I've change the water I get most of the methylene blue out but there's because it's permeate permeated throughout the rock and the, the, the maybe the ceramic dish and all those reasons the water will still have a tinge of blue so it stays a little tinge of blue but that's okay it's just a mild amount of fungicide and uh, the fish don't seem to be harmed by it now when when uh, that gets to that point when you when you've got the baby fry, they'll be three days sitting on the bottom as wigglers, right? So I don't feed them and I don't start feeding them until all of them have lifted off, and I and I say, oh, we have liftoff, you know, and that's how I say this particular breeder box I need to start feeding. So that's when I'll start feeding. I I find it best to do vinegar eels at first for about three days, and then about the second day I start introducing tiny amounts of baby brine shrimp. And then um, the vinegar eels are good because they stay in the water at least 24 hours. And I know they're getting a lot of these little wiggle things in front of them. And it's excellent for them to be able to bite at something, to, to chase after something. Um, yeah, so for that reason, um, I, I really I really admonish uh, um, putting the vinegar eels first. I have used paramecia. That can, be, that can also be used if you have it. Um, but I definitely by the third day of swimming and eating uh, they're going to be big enough they're going to have grown just enough to start eating baby brine shrimp and that's when I start looking for all their bellies every belly in all the group every one of them starts turning orange and that's when I say okay stop the vinegar eels and then just solely um, eat them on um, uh, let them eat the baby brine shrimp so Ray Aquatics, you say 100% RO with the discus. Um, when they're about to, yeah, I do that. Only the breeders and only when, 
only when they are um, about to lay eggs and they'll start picking at a, a something and I know they're about to lay eggs I want to make sure they're in RO water but I haven't always been successful at getting 100% pure RO water because I start changing the water at five gallons at a time and then I have to heat the water and make the more RO water and so I'll then they make another water change five gallons at a time so I keep dropping the R, the TDS 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 so it's it's close to 200 when I start and by the time they're laying the eggs I'm hoping and I'm hoping that I've got it down to TDS closer to um, um, the TDS I'm hoping it, I, I get it really close down to um, it could be low you know 20 to 60 uh, anything under 90 I read the other day or saw someone talk about it and says if it's between between 20 and 90 it's okay so um, I've I've just been confident enough to get it when it's down in the like say 60 TDS um, I don't feel like I have to go keep going further and sure enough that's what happened at this batch they laid the eggs and I just left it at something like 60 TDS and it was definitely under 90 and um, they all hatched so I'm really excited about that I'll show that next week and um, I'll be at the Fish Easy probably unless I'm here at the um, uh, Fish Easy expansion you know grow out facility and we'll from time to time, maybe I'll, during the week or whenever I have a chance, I'll just live stream and show a little quick uh, update on how this place looks and the fish as they start to fill up the tanks. So I'm looking forward to that, but of course with any project, you need to get busy in doing it. There is, uh, I'll show you some of the things that I did get from Mr. Wilson. And uh, one of those things is that you see there that air, that's an air um, right there in the corner, it looks like a box. It's an older style, but it's on springs, and that's an air, that's going to be the air pump. He also had two of them. Hello, Aquamalik. Welcome. Uh, see you joining us. I'm just about to sign off. I'm showing you. I'm showing what I'm doing in a few minutes. I'm going to work on getting that air system going, and this is the uh, pump. So we've got two pumps, and it's always good to have two pumps. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting them both running at the same time, but sometimes it's good to have two pumps because in a fish room when you have two pumps it means that if one drops out or has an issue then you automatically have another one that already is pumping and so that's the nice feature you can have a second pump that's putting pressure so you don't actually lose any pressure if one goes out it will just lower the pressure and you still have some air going into the tanks maybe it's just trickling but at least you know there's some air and that will suffice until you can fix the problem. And the other option is to have it on standby so that if one pump goes out, okay, you're dead in the water, but then you can just hook up the other one and put it right in the same input location that you had the, the first. And so it's like a replacement. So that works too. So I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it. I'll probably do it the, the former rather than the latter, but um, it, it all depends on the final on the final uh, uh, layout so so here we are from fish easy uh, looking at some of the grow out tanks we've got a lot of work to do uh, these are not going to necessarily look pretty these are not going to be like great display tanks but one of the things i i am going to do and i really want to mention it to to everyone out there if you're thinking about showing off your tanks and showing off uh, even on YouTube or whatever try to keep the front glass clean I've tried and and I don't always succeed at remembering to clean the glass before I go live and it makes a big difference when when the camera is looking up and it starts to focus on the glass instead of the fish it's really tough so it's not that you want to clean everything and get rid of all the bacterial uh, slime off the walls because maybe that's what you're using for your D um, um, for your um, cycling and maybe you're using that for the for the fish and it's for the good health of the fish to have that uh, uh, on the glass and so forth but 
for the front glass, do you really need to have it on all the glass or can we have one really clean front look? And uh, there's all, all added benefit that if you can see your fish well, you'll also be able to monitor the health of your fish. So that's my tip for the week and uh, keep the front front face clean and that, that that's the best thing to do. I hope you enjoyed the quick visit of uh, seeing all these stands and I know it's a dream come true, but uh, hey, you know, you know, in 20 years from now, I, I'm sure I will be in a case of, um, of Mr. Wilson and I'll probably be passing off the same tanks to someone. And uh, that's probably what will happen because um, it, it um, got to the point. Mr. Wilson is currently 88 years old. Yesterday, I had a chance to talk to him and uh, it was a little, little confusion as to exactly what was his age. He's giving up his fish um, at age 88. And um, he may have been, I don't know if he was confused before about what he was saying about his age back in the days of, of um, uh, early history, but, but uh, he confirmed that's how old he is right now. And uh, he's moving into a, an apartment and he's leaving his house, which was a tremendous place. And um, more on him later as time goes on because I'm sure he'll keep coming up into conversation. He was 51 years in the house where he's at now and they're selling it in two weeks. And uh, I just got the tanks out in time. So that's why it was such a push to get the tanks over here. Now that the tanks are over here and everything is out, um, I can focus on getting them set up and going. So we'll see what we can do this weekend. It's uh, here in the uh, Canada area it is a long weekend and so maybe that will be a benefit to me and I might be able to get some more done so uh, we'll see you all later uh, maybe uh, Aqua Malik I hope you're able to do some live streaming later today that would be nice and uh, I'll chime in and maybe we'll all connect with you a little later on so thank you very much everyone for joining and uh, I don't see any more questions I did I think next week I'll have a better opportunity to answer questions and uh, I just wanted to show this off to everybody it's now what 32 minutes so um, it's longer than I actually had intended just wanted to give a quick update thank you so much for joining and um, and and especially those in Australia thank you so much uh, 715 there you go okay so we'll head on over at 715 Eastern Standard Time that's uh, uh, Oh, it's 5.30, a little less than two hours from now. Okay, we'll see, um, we'll see you all next week. And as always, um, keep it real.